It's supposed to be a rare, mythical creature, yet in the tech world, unicorns are now common. Fox Business contributor Bob Rice is with me now. He has 60 seconds to define unicorns and why they matter to investors. Without a question, not holding it against you, Bob. Ready, <laughs> set, go. <laughs> so a unicorn is a privately held technology company, a startup that's got a billion dollar valuation. That's a lot of money, and it was so rare in the old days that we called them unicorns. But today there are 115 such companies around the world. The question is, what does that mean for an average investor? Well, really three things. Number one, if you have happen to be in a mutual fund and you like unicorns, congratulations, because many mutual funds, believe it or not, are on the unicorn hunt in order to pop returns. Number two, quantitative easing has inflated all asset prices, yes, including pre-public venture. And number three, and this is really the sad one, the SEC has made it so difficult to go public and so risky that many of these companies simply are refusing to do it. That's why you get these valuations. And that may be good, useful for investors, but it also keeps them from investing in some of the best young growth companies we've got. Look at that. Ten seconds to spare. Smoke them if you got them, Bob, right? So, but I'm glad we're having this conversation because for those who don't know, in the venture capital world and the angel investing world, which basically just means backing tech companies with a little less money than the VCs and the venture capitalists do, right. this is really important to them. But this also affects stockholders, right, of publicly traded companies. Yeah, it, it really does. And, you know, this, this whole mystique of these things, you know, part of it is just getting the headline, getting the headline, getting the headline. And what you have to be careful of as a regular investor is a lot of these unicorns actually are a little bit mythical. They really aren't quite what they seem to be. Because a lot of them... You're looking for balance sheets, are you, <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, like revenues and stuff like that. But it's, it's kind of even worse than that because a lot of these late-stage venture capitalists and the mutual funds, when they come in, are actually investing in a way that allows you to put that headline number on it, but they have a lot of downside protection. So if later the IPO goes off at a lower price, they get more shares to make up for the risk. So they're not really backing the valuation in the way it seems, although it reads that way in the newspaper and it helps, you know, Gin up fuel. support and Absolutely. buzz and why not in the branding. But what does this mean then to the average person? Because I know that there are some mutual fund companies right. who are actually contributing to this buzziness. Yeah, no, exactly. And that's one of the things that really kind of makes me a little queasy is when you hear that a, a Fidelity or a Vanguard or somebody like that, T-Row, is investing at these valuations because, well, gee, that must mean it's worth you know, blankety blank. But it doesn't always mean that. Of course, they are in it because they're hoping that you they'll get the pop if the company ever does go public, which a lot of these guys don't ever want to. But if it does go public, uh, they will obviously will juice yeah, their returns. Yeah, because Price and Vanguard, I mean, they're supposed to be the big, boring places. You put your money and essentially you're not dealing with a lot of risk. People who I've spoken to about that say, yes, it's true. They are investing in these pre-public tech companies, but at a very small, it's a very small amount so, in other words, it, I've received the message, dear, to don't panic. Yeah, it's a small percentage of their overall assets. They're ginormous companies, so they can afford to do that. All right. Bob Rice, we thank you as always. We are